Welcome to the Quantum Leap Your Business and Life podcast. My name is Bethany London, and I am supporting CEOs and entrepreneurs in multiplying revenues and opportunities of their business through intuitive guidance and energetic healing. I am obsessed with finding and releasing blocks so that you can start receiving the guidance and opportunities that will be bringing you quantum leaps with ease. If you are looking to upgrade your business, life, spirituality, or need a perspective shift to flow, you've come to the right place. Leave it to me to pull out the juicy stories, quantum leap hacks, and how our inspiring guests have tackled obstacles and gotten into the flow to reach new heights. My intention is to bring clarity and massive awareness that infinite possibilities are everywhere. Your next moment could be a miraculous one. Thank you for being on this journey with me. Let's uncover their strategies, have fun, and see how we can quantum leap together. All right. All right. We got Barbie Layton with us today, who I have known for over three years now, I believe. And mm -hmm. when I originally met her, she was working a regular job. And now she has been seen in Forbes, USA Today, Goss, AP, and many other publications. Barbie Layton is a scientifically verified quantum healer, executive coach, international best-selling author, TV show host of You Are Amazing, speaker that works with CEOs, elite athletes, and individuals to help them refall in love with themselves, reanimate their dreams, and become the VIP of their own lives. She is an international best-selling author in the Smash franchise, Woman Gone Wild, where she was on four billboards in New York Times Square in 2022. She now works as a leader of leaders to help shift organizations to optimize their harmony and increase their monetization. She has been on multiple platforms and stages with some of the top names in personal growth and the development industry and will be featured in three upcoming books. Just filmed a movie that's coming out, which I'm super excited about on Amazon Prime coming out January, 2024. So keep an eye out for that. And we'll update with links when we, when we get them. And she's designed a manifestation product line that will be featured at the Oscars giving lounge in March of 2024. One more thing, folks. She is also an advisory council member of the secret knock and will be appearing with them at the United Nations general assembly in New York city, May, 2024. And when I met her, we were just, you know, signing up for our course. <laughs> now we're kind of doing the same thing, but she's just like, <laughs> as far as publicity goes. So oh, I would love to hear about this huge, massive quantum leap. Thank you, Bethany. Well, yeah, it's, it's super fun to do podcasts with your friends because they actually know kind of like the all the juice behind everything that's like really, really happened as opposed to just that social media presence of where you're just smiling and, you know, pretending like everything's great. I think that having the pandemic for some people was a blessing and for some people was a curse. It was just that, that total opposite side of that. And when Bethany and I signed up for the course together in February of 2020, it was literally like, it started, I think on the 28th and it was like literally two weeks before the pandemic where everything just got, got shut down on the 13th of March for the, you know, at, at noon, it was just like, it was totally like, okay, everything's now totally virtual. But what was so amazing is that I feel like when you're co-creating with the universe, all these things, basically, I know sometimes people say that, you know, the universe conspires to help you on these things. We didn't really have, they didn't have enough servers for zoom. If you remember in 2020, they didn't have a lot of things. They had all the servers over in China. They didn't have them around the world. Facebook, you had all sorts of people that were so accustomed to being how huge audiences, musicians who would go up on stages, rock stars and people that, you know, charge 30, $40,000, like a Tony Robbins, other people like that, of where you go to see them in person. But now all of a sudden you had Facebook lives where people were going live and you had big name people who had five people live, seven people live. So they were engaging in an intimate way in a very different fashion. And during that time was when I really, really got involved kind of with the Mind Valley, the whole thing, because Vision was writing with the Buddha and the Badass that year. And he had a, the Facebook Live with, you know, a group of people. And then from there, everything kind of moved over to, to Zoom, moved over, a lot of people moved over to Telegram. It's like, there are a lot of these platforms that ended up moving over to, but nobody knew how to monetize in 2020. 
Nobody knew how to monetize anything with the virtual world. They didn't know how to get people. It wasn't until 2021 that, in my opinion, the door kind of closed to where all of a sudden people were like, oh, for $19.99, you can get on this or, oh, for $20 here and I'll give you these bonuses or whatever. That model hadn't been created yet. And so by just following along during, you know, when I was working my regular job on one screen, I had two other screens going. They were either Mind Valley Quest at the, te- at the time. I was listening to affirmations at night, literally all night long, where you can go onto YouTube and get like subliminal tracks for sleeping meditations. I was listening to, to Christy Marie's Unlimited Abundance 24 hours a day. I just had it play over and over and over again of just having that in that space oh, over and over just, and over again. I'm just remembering even that course, what was it? Three months, three months Correct. long. Even Correct. during the three months long, so we're all in this Facebook group and Barbie out of everybody is constantly like, oh my God, this happened. Oh my God, this happened. Oh my God. Like she was pissing people off because they were so jealous of how much she was manifesting. So <laughs> if you remember, like, I feel like from the get-go, when I met you, you were just like <sighs> manifesting. So during that time, because the vision thing, I believe happened after, right? No, it happened. It was simultaneous. And that was the best part. Every, so that's the part too. I call it the giant, the the divine swirl. I feel like when you're in quantum leap space, you literally, you allow that the universe wants better for you than you could ever even imagine. But your imagination is one of the most important muscles that you can use period. Cause it's something nobody can ever take away from you. But in the world of screens and all the different things that are very finite and logical, there's a, in my opinion, there's a concerted effort to be able to have it where people don't have the ability to have this wild best best imagination. So instead you're co-creating with this imagination stuff and you're putting out these, like, like when I was in the the quest with Naveen Jain, that was one of my favorite ones with Mind Valley, And it was, you know, it was the quest It's called the power of boldness. And he was talking about all the power of boldness and how you have to literally go out there and you have to have an obsession. And he works with freaking Elon Musk and SpaceX, you know, and he was the first guest on my TV show. I had a seven time billionaire on my TV show who is a spiritual guru, even though he doesn't claim to be. And I'm, I mean, literally it just went from manifesting, you know, speaking engagements on the first expos. I know Bethany and I were on some of the first virtual expos ever in 2021. And then from there, I moved into a TV show. And then from there, you know, I had Naveen Jain, I had Ken Hanna, Dr. John D. Martini, I had all these amazing people where it's like, you know, who am I? I'm a nobody. But by the same token, it's like they felt that if I was supposed to be in their divine tapestry, that they responded in kind. And so that was something of where I find that the people that are like the millionaires and the billionaires who are doing benevolent things in the world, they just focus on whatever their intuition tells them in the moment. And so when Naveen was live with Vision on a virtual and he said, hey, here's my email. Write me if you want to, et cetera. He doesn't have gatekeepers, PR people. He's one of the most humble people I've ever met in my life. But by the same token, he stated, you were meant to be in my life for whatever capacity, just like I was meant to be in yours. And so when you look at the intricate dance of that quantum leaping of where it's like, I just told the universe in 2020 that I will I will say yes to everything that you put in front of me. And that meant that I refinanced my home. That means that I, I had to go into in somewhat of debt. I had to really, really be tr- trusting in the sense of like, why am I investing this kind of energy or this kind of money in something where I have no idea what's going to happen. And I mean, Bethany can tell you the first year in Facebook, it's like, it took me a year before I even put my picture out. I had a cartoon because I literally did not do social media. So she barely has an Instagram, but yet she's blown up. Yeah. It's it's amazing. (laughs) And so having this global reputation of where I had people because of my quantum healing abilities, having people call me from Poland who were in the Mind Valley community and say, your face appeared in front of me. And I know that you're the person that can heal me or someone up in, in Oregon that had the same thing of where it was like all these really crazy things of where it was like, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. But by answering the call, And not saying no to all of these things that people say no to all the time, because what I've realized is that a lot of people are used to being scammed so much. They're so used to having phishing and they're used to having people that are not not who they are. And they're used to having Photoshop and they're used to having AI and all these things that are fraudulent. It's very, very difficult to be able to tune into what is real and what is authentic. But when you have the discernment and you're able to now tune into that frequency of that, Bethany and I talk about VIP global access and about creating doors that have never existed before where they just open and then literally doors that would never open before i used to pay a lot of people to be in certain spaces but now i'm a part of those other spaces as well and it's like instead of having it where it's mentor to peer you know like or protege now it's like being able to move on to that kind of like 
level where you're, where you're parallel with people, it's such a beautiful energetic shift because it tells you in the sense of where by using universal values, which are honesty and loyalty and integrity, meaning that you mean what you say and you say what you mean. Unfortunately, eight out of 10 people in the personal growth and development business, they are not who they, they say they are. And so that's the other part too, about being very, very discerning. And I learned a lot of, a lot of expensive and, and terrible, you know, lessons throughout the way too, but I've never, I don't call people out on stuff. I don't go out there to me. It's like, I believe karma is real and whatever it is that is coming to the people, that is it where I just want to continue to stay in the highest frequency possible. Now, going back to Naveen James, giving your email, because that triggered something for me that I remember, like I got the down. So I've spoken at like USC before University of Southern California. And then one day I basically got the download to reach out. And so I just did it like right away. I didn't put any thought. I just emailed the lady, the contact that I had set, had and was like, hey, do you need me? And she responded immediately. She was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect timing. I'm going into a yep. meeting, I'll bring it up. And boom, I had another speaking opportunity there. So I'm curious, was it the same for you with Naveen? Like, did you reach out right away? Because normally yep. I feel like right away. process, what should I say? How should nope. I, you know? Yeah. Nope. It was the same thing with Linda Clemens, who's an amazing, amazing lady. She has actually worked with, I think she's one that got an Obama award. She's worked with presidents, the FBI, they call her the human lie detector. And she actually has a quest on Mind Valley, which is about reading body language. But when she came on, she was just so magnanimous and so like vivacious. And I just love what she had to say. I, I looked her up to try to see where she was from because she's from the Midwest. And I looked up her number and I just left her a voicemail. I was like, damn, that was a really cool, you know, live that you had with Vision. I love what you're doing, all that kind of stuff too. I don't know if you'll ever call me because you don't know who I am from Adam, but I just want to let you know that you are amazing and I like what you're doing. And that was something that I learned from Keith Ferrati uh, where he talks about the fact that you have to have, when you approach people, especially, especially important people who are used to people asking them for money or asking them or pitching them all the time, you need to come with five messages of gratitude. You need to have some sort of a five places of where you're not selling, you're not doing any, you're not doing any, any pitching of any kind, et cetera, et cetera. And for me, it was like, I was so grateful to be around some of these great thinkers around these people who just, you know, I mean, the fact that Naveen Jain is the only person that has a private license to be able to put robots on the moon. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that he's doing. And he's literally, he's got a company called Viome, which he's trying to eradicate cancer, blood, heart attacks, obesity, diabetes. Like he's literally going out there and putting his money to be able to help people. And so when you have, you know, badass friends like that, of people who, you know, so we had a correspondence for about eight months. It was just back and forth. It wasn't like every day, but it was definitely something of where when I'm sitting there with my stream yard in my, in my condo, because that was still during the lockdown time. And I've got my lights up. I've got my green screen pretty much behind my butt because I'm like walled into you know, the corner. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm keep on telling myself, okay, don't, don't forget to press record because otherwise there's no interview. And I'm like thinking to myself, why is he going to come and talk to me? But then all of a sudden, poof, he pops up there. His eyes were glistening. We had an hour and a half amazing conversation. And I asked him about whether or not this universe was a simulation because he had some ideas about that because that's what he and Elon kind of talk about. So what I loved was it was more of a fireside chat where people said, wow, how long have you guys been friends? And I, I always want to have something of where it's that personal touch of where they can go on YouTube and they can go see a hundred videos of him. And then he will maybe say a lot of the same things because that's in his business mode. But when you literally, you do the deep dive research on your guests and you want to know like what they're about and not just the, Oh, let's sell your book or let's sell that too. It's like, I want to know who are you? Who, what, what is it about you that, you know, that has allowed you to be able to, to create this amazing life because those kind of people are so inspirational. Like Ken Honda is the, the Zen millionaire from Japan and he had nine people on my interview of where he literally took everyone's call. It was, it was, you know, he was booked for an hour and we were like, Oh, we want to really respect your time. Oh, I was he's there. Like, oh no. Yeah, exactly. And that was just so amazing to be able to have someone who was like, you know, who has such yeah, like, he was influence really, he's in super every kind. He's very, yes. Kind. Yeah. Yes. And there was, and there's no pretense. And that's what I love is that when you, when you meet people, you know, a lot of people have this idea about rich people being, you know, haughty or they're too good for people or whatever as well. But once you get into the space of where they know that they can trust you because you're not asking for anything from them, you're not trying to suck on them. Like a lot of people are trying to do. If you're always wanting to create more value, when you bring whatever you're bringing to the next space, it's always a win-win. And it's just like, you know, next week you're going to be going to secret knock with me, which is super exciting. 
And that's one of those things of where that's actually Forbes calls that the, the best networking event that you cannot buy a ticket to because oh. it is invitation only. And so yeah. I got invited by my friend last November. And then after that, they loved me so much. They offered me four for one tickets, which was like amazing. And ever since, you know, I've been a part of that community and they're, they're all about the glow up. Like to me, I call myself a galactic cheerleader because, and you know, this It's like, I always want to cheerlead other people. And even if people were pissed off that I was manifesting stuff, it was still like, you know, good for you. And I'm so excited because to me, instead of hating on people and bringing the energy down, if I can see somebody accomplishing amazing things, like, you know, I'm friends with Daniel Raphael, who's the dream porting guy in, in Texas. And he's been working with billionaires and all sorts of amazing, amazing people. But him sharing all these cool things, sometimes I know he's like, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but it's like, dude, if you're living that, you're not bragging. If that's actually your life, you're not bragging. You were inspiring other people that he said, oh, I just needed to take a flight to California. And then he met all these cool people and then he got to do this and he got to do that. That's where when we follow those inner hunches and you kind of live by what you would want to be doing if you were in your 100% pleasure, what would you do if you were in your desires? Because I really believe that your desires, even though a lot of people think they're not, they're not good things, I think your desires are literally the universe wanting to know itself through you. And so if you have that opportunity, you're kind of the avatar moving through the physical world as that in, in incarnation of the divine spark, knowing itself here on this planet. I, you're, I'm, you're, you're bringing up something I want to touch on too, like multiple things. So I was, I was listening to someone else speak about how, you know, and I know you, you have a practice, which we should actually talk about of manifesting. So if we're like, oh, I want to fly, fly private. Right. And let's say you've never flown private and you really want to fly in private. And next thing you know, you're on a regular plane and you see people up in first class. And then you're like judging on them because whatever, you're literally going to be pushing any experience of calling that in. So what Barbie's doing here is she's like fully immersed herself with these people, embrace them. And like, I mean, I, it feels like one of your keys to quantum leaps here is relationships. Absolutely. Because ultimately I never wanted to create any of this stuff so that I could be by myself. The whole thing is that when you connect with other Epic people that are doing Epic things, that don't have to apologize for what they're doing. Cause like, I have a lot of friends that are multimillionaires and they say that a lot of their family and friends, they just, they can't relate. They, they can't even wrap their brain around what they're doing. And so when you're with other people that are manifesting amazing stuff, like one of my friends is like creating the UN's first quantum city and has over a billion dollars in funding that's been promised for that. I mean, th these are the kind of things that were to most people that sounds like you're in cuckoo land. It's like, what, what are you talking about? But what I do a lot of times in manifesting is that it's that whole gamification and acting in childlike wonder and suspending disbelief. Like to me, those are really important that you're like a five-year-old at Christmas time or whatever you celebrate and you're so freaking excited and I get all, and I get all excited, but it's like, you know, if you want that car, go take a test drive and feel what that feels like. What does the leather feel like? What does the steering wheel feel like? Like, how does it like, you know, how, what's the torque on it when you, when you go down the street, if you want, you know, you do real estate, it's like, how, how is it? What houses do you want to go to? It's free to go to an open house. Go in there and just imagine yourself. Oh, what would it feel like to come home to this place every single day and click that clicker and have this three-car garage? And what would this feel like to have that? And then also staying in that, that same frequency, it's like if you want to be in luxury hotels and things like that, go to the lobby, order a coffee or a tea or a drink. It's like maybe less than 20 bucks for you to just sit there and lounge for a couple of hours. But being in that space, like I love the fact that last year and two, two years before, it's like, I love the Roosevelt Hotel in Hollywood. I love it. And I ended up in on the fifth floor in the corner. I rented a suite for an event that I was going to. And it was the one that Judy Garland stayed at when she filmed The Wizard of Oz. And I was just like, oh my God, like, this is so fun. Then I look over across the way and then there's a whole Wizard of Oz, like a big long banner that's like 60 feet long. And then I can see the Grauman's Chinese Theater where her footprints are there with Marilyn Monroe and all those other things too. And it just becomes this like, magical overload of like, wow, this is so yummy and juicy. And I love that. And then I also do a meditation practice of where I throw out Barbie bubbles. So I just indiscriminately send Barbie bubbles, millions and millions of holographic pink little bubbles everywhere. They just, just imagine them just popping all over the place, little love bubbles that just people just maybe need that. They look, oh, that felt good or, or whatever. But it's also, I think that what a lot of people miss with the law of attraction and other things too, is that you need to know how it's going to feel when you're in that space, because you need to know how it's going to feel before it happens, not 
after it happens, because a lot of times people say like, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. And in quantum leaping, it's the flip side in the sense of where, you know, I will, you know, I will believe it before I see it. And then Mm -hmm. from there. So a lot of times, like with manifesting money, I did a lot of slot machine games where it's just like, oh my God, I just won $20 million. Wow. And I'm running around, I'm jumping around. It's, 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 it's mocking up those emotions of what that will feel like in your body. And then being able to resonate with that, because I know that you and I've talked about this multiple times too. It's like a lot of times people have what's called expectation hangover and they think they want something so bad and they want it and they want it and they want it. And then they get it. And it's like, okay, what's next? <laughs> yep. And <been> there. <laughs> so like, you know, being on the four billboards in New York times square, those are 45 foot billboards. They were on 48th and Broadway. If you know the Times square of the two corners, there's the one with the ball with the New Year's Eve ball. And then yeah. the other side of Times Square is the iconic one with the Coca-Cola stack. So we were the wings of the Coca-Cola stack on 48th and Broadway, which is the most prime like billboard real estate that you can get. And then it would be our book, Women Gone Wild, that would be 14 seconds with all of our faces on it. And then the next ad that would cycle through would be Kim Kardashian doing her skins line with her skincare. So it was like literally like your head explodes. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, to be like cycling with one of the most iconic women in the entire world. But having experienced that, it's like, now I know that all this playful, joyful co-creation with the universe makes things so much more possible. And I also have to get out of my own way because a lot of times, like I said, it's like the universe wants more for you than you want for yourself or what you could even imagine. And if you look at all the different kinds of architecture and all the different epochs that we've had in, in time, you've got the Roman empires and the Egyptian empires, and you've got, you know, the Turkish Ottoman empire, it's like, all these different people had different ideas about what architecture and what, you know, weaponry looked like and civilization looked like. Everyone created their own civilization based on those, their, their agreed realities at that time. And so stepping into that space is, it's really, really exciting. But another thing that came up that was really important with quantum leaping too, is that a lot of things that people do are for show. So I, you know, I mentioned in a lot of my talks, the thing that put me on the map because Vishen Lakiani promoted me on Mind Valley on the lives that he's doing, which I really appreciated because I was in his premium coaching in 2020, which was less than 30 of us with him and his brilliant brain, just trying to figure it out in 2020 when everything is going crazy. But I really focused on extreme gratitude. And so I walked people through a process of talking about, you know, bless and thank the bed that you're sitting on that somebody made for you. Thank that you're that you're safe. Thank all the people, bless all the people back that are working at the electric company that you're never going to see that are feeding their families or keeping your lights on, you know, bless the internet company that's, you know, keeping your Wi-Fi on, bless the people that made your phone, just every single thing. So like, I just took a shower a couple hours ago and it's like, thank you to my shower that, you know, I have a nozzle. Thank you to my bath products. Thank you to the water company that kept the water going. Thank you to my, you know, tankless water heater that heated the water for me. It might sound really, really lame, but for a lot of people, especially when people weren't sure if they were going to die or not during the pandemic, it was something that centered people and it became very somatic. And I had people that emailed me, you know, like that saved my life. Like I was able to, to Mm. gratitude stack and it'd be 15 to 20 things that you're grateful for. And then you haven't even gotten to the people in your life yet. You haven't even gotten to your animals or the, you know, the families and friends and the communities or any of those other kind of things that are good. But that kind of comes from that happy money concept from Ken Honda in the sense of where the relationship that you have with it, if it's all, you know, tightened up, it's it's not going to flow. You, you need to have the ability to be able to bless it. So every single time I write a, a check, you know, or I, I send a, a payment to my mortgage company, I bless the mortgage company and I thank them for the fact that I'm able to to live, you know, live in a home. It's like, the, those are the kind of things of where it's like, I always practice gratitude, but I'll, I need to start doing the blessing. Cause I have a whole thing on my book about like kind of the extreme gratitude, but I was adding it up in dollar signs on mine just to That's show okay. like how abundant we are because people are like, I'm broke. Oh, what, what are you talking on? A thousand dollar phone. <laughs> like That's right. You know? That's right. But I love the extension of the blessing. Cause when I do, when I eat, I'm always like, bless whoever, every single person you have marketing, you know, the grocery yep. store, you have the people that originally planted the seeds or whatever. Yep. You can yep. be blessing a million people just one with one thing. And yep. if you want to dive into, cause I know, you know, all about the gratitude and how it's like 850 on the frequency scale, if love and above affects 750,000 people, I don't even know what gratitude is. Well, gratitude is right above. So on the David Hawkins scale, like you're talking about yeah. uh, scale of consciousness, 528 Hertz is my jam. So that's what I like to tone. That's what I've been 
meditating to and Tony for the last 30 years. And I do believe that is the, that is the tone of miracles and it's the DNA, DNA, creativity, and love. So those are the, those are the three things that are, that are connected to 520 Hertz. Gratitude is between 528 and 600. So it's in that phrase too, because we go to zero to a thousand. So a thousand is considered enlightenment, but that is definitely something of where it is a frequency in and of itself, because it's something of where, like, for example, I remember last year I had, I was taking my mother to the Ritz Carlton for Mother's Day brunch. And, you know, it was a definitely a splurge, but something of where it's like, I wanted to take her to a nice place. That was when the gasoline prices started to spike, you know, it was like $6 a gallon. It was quite a bit. And, you know, I had, a, I had a hybrid at the time and now I have an electric, but I remember going to the gas station and saying, wow, I can sit here and bitch and complain that it's $6 or I can look at it and say, wow, I am so blessed. And I'm so grateful that I have a car that gives me the freedom to go over where I want. And I am so blessed that I'm able to pay for this gasoline, even though I know it is it's more expensive than it was before. And I'm so blessed that I have the freedom to be able to go wherever I want. And I can go take my mother out to a beautiful brunch and then drive on the beautiful coast of California. And it shifts everything. It shifts that perspective from, you know, it's easy to complain about things, but it's also when you shift yourself back into that, appreciation of the things that you do have like you said yeah you're not so a lot of times now they're fifteen hundred dollar phones so it's that kind of stuff of where for their first world problems which doesn't mean that they're not legitimate or they're not you know necessary and i mean even like the clients that i work with when i do quantum healing with people i'm working with people who are generally already successful to begin with but they just haven't hit that next level and it's like me being able to help them to get to that next level that's the part that's exciting to me but a lot of it starts off with the fact that that third part that you talked about, which is like my elevator pitch about becoming the VIP of your own life. I used fashion therapy to, to dress in crazy designer clothing and on a regular day of yes, work or whatever. <laughs> and just in the sense of where it was that whole concept of where, you know, I've had five near death experiences. And in 2016, it's like when I was told that I had an incurable disease and I couldn't do anything about it. And I'm like, what is my money for? What is it here for? If, if my money is not here to work for me, what am I doing with it? So I started playing with gamifying, trying to find designer clothing for, I mean, I found outrageous discounts for things that were just, they're the real deal, but it was just total overstocks or second runs or, you know, a Gucci shirt that has one sewing G that's off and they can't sell it to the regular store, just crazy stuff. But when you see people who have, you know, they didn't do this in my house, but when you see people, you go to their living room and they've got plastic on it because they're keeping it nice for when the company comes over. That's your couch. It's your living room. Saving that beautiful perfume. You know, I love, I love perfumes. I love Chanel and I have um, Versace and, and uh, Boucheron. I'll, I'll, I'll love, 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 love beautiful scents. But it's one of those things of where it's like, if you die, then basically someone else is going to get that at Salvation Army. And it's like, you never used it because you were saving it for a, a, a rainy day. And I remember during the pandemic, I saw some lady at a consignment store says, put on a mask so you don't have to come and bring me all your, you know, so you don't get everybody sick and have to bring me your dead grandma stuff. So, I mean, it's kind of, you know, in the idea where a lot of people were taking their stuff and they were just gonna be donating it because people weren't there any longer. And so it's like that carpe diem, live in the moment, be be here now, use the things that are here for you. It's like be be in in you know involved with that too. Instead of saving like the really nice body wash, use it, enjoy it. If you bought it or you got it as a gift, et cetera, use it in the energy of which it was, you know, intended. But that whole kind of like, I'm gonna wait until later, I'm gonna wait until later, nothing is guaranteed. So in that quantum leap space too, it's opening up to the universe unlimited possibilities and what is available to you. And I mean, when I look at the fact that I'm going to be in three, possibly four books coming up in the next three or four months, then in addition to that, the movie coming out and then having the Oscars gifting lounge and having a product line. And then the United Nations is like, all that manifested just in the last six months, you know? And then I will also have a feature article of my own before they were compilation and Forbes magazine. Like, I'm just like, oh my God. Like, it's like okay. the levels go to the levels that go to the levels but as you know because of the fact that the way that I roll I want to share that with my friends as well that's why you're coming down next week that's why I've got my other two friends that are coming down from Canada and Las Vegas it's the most fun thing because then these can be shared experiences and then when we open the doors for other people and then that reciprocity goes that's the best thing so if like you're doing nice things for people and then they do that in reciprocity everybody wins and when it's a win-win situation for everybody and there's no uneven situation 
Cause I, I mean, I'm definitely a recovering people pleaser. I used to overgive. I probably still do to this day, but it's having the opportunity where my feeling like I was receiving impaired. I am now allowing people to do things for me. I'm not allowing people to, you know, to, to reciprocate in a way that I, I never did before. And that's something that I think that's a big shift because the circle of cycle, even of loving, it's gotta be, you know, the ACDC is what makes the electricity go. It can't have, you know, without the other polarity, it doesn't work. So all of this is energetic frequency and the things that you want, you have to vibrate at those currencies. You have to literally make it of where it is. But, you know, even I really like Esther and Jerry Hicks's work about the vortex because pulling all that in whenever I do a meditation, you know, I feel like I've learned from some of the best of the best with manifestation and intuition coaches, you know, around the world. And I'm grateful for that. But my own brand is my own brand, just like your own brand is your own brand. We have like our own method of where it's kind of a, an amalgamation of, of, of multiple things together. But after I call in the light, I basically, I put my arms out and imagine that there's this beautiful blue velvet gold uh, tasseled um, blanket. And it's got fisherman's hooks on it as if I am in the ocean with a net. And I'm just pulling all the things that I want to pull into my orbit. I want to pull it into my vortex, just whatever's there for me too. And that's how, you know, fishermen will look and say, oh, look, I've got 200 tuna and a tin can. So you just, you know, for us, our job is to get rid of that tin can. So you only have the 200 tuna, but it's like, it's throwing out that net and trusting that there's going to be a bounty of things that are coming, come back for you. Yeah. And I, I mean, I feel like a lot of people are not even going to know half the things that we're talking about. So Mind Valley is a personal development growth full of tons of master classes, essentially taught by spiritual leaders, would you say? of different, it could be relationships, could be business, marketing, Jerry, spiritual Nester entrepreneur. Hicks. Yeah. Spiritual entrepreneurs, Jerry and Esther Hicks. They're phenomenal. You can see their YouTube videos all over YouTube or their videos all over YouTube, which are really beautiful and high consciousness, very profound ways of thinking for manifestation. But ultimately one of the things that I really want to ground for everyone to hear is you've manifested all these epic relationships. The beauty of that is now that they're at some level is that they're, they're creating epic things in the world that are supporting the planet, which is why I believe what it like, what's your personal mission? My personal mission is to uplift humanity as, as many hearts as possible. That that's, that's truly my goal. And I think that by, I'm a super connector and I love connecting people who otherwise wouldn't have ever met each other. I've had um, multiple people that have ended up getting married and they've ended up having children together or they, um, and they call me up and they say, Hey, we should throw you a parade. Cause sometimes I'm my, my inner intuition is kind of pushy. And I was like, you need to talk to this girl. No, no, no. You need to get this girl's <laughs> number. No, I don't know. Dude, can you just take this girl's number and just call her? Cause I just could totally see you dating. And then the next thing you know, you know, they're calling me and saying that, that they should throw me a parade cause they're getting married and they have had two, they've had two kids now for, 15 years and then at Mind Valley Live in 2020, I had these two people that I kept saying, You guys should date. And they were all embarrassed. And then, you know, I, I was keeping in touch and then I got messages like, We're moving in together. And I'm like, Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it too. You have and, another you know, secret, secret job there. <laughs> well, having the opportunity to be able to see energy and see energy here. So I just recently learned about human design. It wasn't something that I really knew about before. And I'm a projector seer. So that's one of those things of where by me being able to see the wisdom of that. And I think that's also the reason why I'm considered a cultural sister in a lot of communities because I've been all over the world and there's been a lot of places where I've been embraced, even though I'm other. And I really, really appreciate that because my vibration is oftentimes of where I, I resonate deeply and want to understand people and where they're coming from and how, how they operate, et cetera. And it, it's, it's that interconnectedness and that feeling of belonging that everybody is looking for. And now that we have more virtual opportunities, that's definitely a good thing, but there's nothing better than that in person. And even I found out that like, I mean, a lot of the people at Secret Knock are people that are doing Alzheimer's vaccines and they're doing neuropathy med medications to be able to regrow nerves. And they're, you know, they were the first ones to break chat GPT last January and show people how to like make $250,000 deals, et cetera. The, the, the CEO of UGG comes all the time, the, the founder of E! News, it's just like, Greg Reed, who's the head of it, he's written over 150 books and worked with the Napoleon Hill Institute. I mean, it's just like these epic human beings. And then a lot of them like Greg and then Jason Stewart, who's on there too, they'll just send Instagram videos of them, you know, skateboarding barefoot. And then Jason's literally doing handstands while he's flying down the road and, you know, with the, on the skateboard too. It's like, it's about like 
they're living epic lives, but they're having so much fun when they're doing it at the same time. And that's the part to me that inspires me because I think that it's that fun of where everyone's too serious. And I think that to me, the meaning of life and what your purpose also should be is to find inner fulfillment. And fulfillment means that that carries you from event to event to thing to thing where you have that true fulfillment. And that's a place of almost like a Zen peacefulness where you feel really like, you know, when your heart is warm and you're just like, yes, everything's, you know, going good. And I'm really, really excited. And when you feel happy and, but it's not a fleeting moment. It's something of where you just really feel that beautiful warmth and that glow in your heart center. That that's to me the, the best part. And, and I think too, that the more people that have the opportunity, I mean, you know, I do manifestation circles on Mondays that are 30 minutes or flash things where we get in, we, we get out. Yeah. And they're for busy professionals, but watching the things that people manifest oh my god tv shows and and opportunities and events and speaking gigs and they just you know get their eighty thousand dollar client and then i had somebody who became a, a professional like the exclusive photographer for one of the biggest magazines in the world like just this kind of stuff where you're like wow 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 and i'm not doing it i'm just a facilitator of this quantum energy portal because those are chi balls prana balls some people call them blessing balls you can call them whatever you want. I call it containers because I'm always like when I work with people and they're multiplying their income or the revenues, it's the container that I hold. And so as you guys can see, anyone listening, if, if you want to manifest like Barbie, you got to apply to be in a portal. I don't know that you accept everybody, but I don't, I don't, but it's still, when you've got that exponential thing of where you've got kick-ass people that are doing kick-ass things. Mm -hmm. And then each one of us basically wants to celebrate each other and help each other to be able to get to that next level. It, it's it's the most amazing thing to behold, in my opinion. That that's the part that I love. It. It's so juicy to watch other people succeed. But then having that aware, when we all up level each other and we all like glow up and we are just literally like excited for each other. In my opinion, like you said, judging that person in first class is not going to get you there. But looking at that, you know, beautiful model, it's like you know, I I I know somebody that you know just saw that he he now has a beautiful after work with me now has a gorgeous girlfriend, and I'm like, damn you go like, that's amazing. You know, obviously you cracked the code and found the love that you wanted to say. That's the kind of stuff to me of where it's just that that's, that's so fulfilling. It really, really truly is being able to be the facilitator of that. Cause I don't do channeling or any of that other kind of stuff too. I'm not a medium. I'm not, a, I'm not a psychic, but the energetic quantum field is so vast. And by creating those, I call them portals, but and if you call them containers, but they've been used since ancient times. And if you go to martial arts, you can have people, if they use them in a negative way, you can kill somebody with that. You can actually project that and kill somebody with it. So it's very, very powerful on the light side and on the dark side. And I also did some research too, that I didn't know that apparently the Hindus, it's been over 5,000 years old of where they do a lot of manifestation processes in their practices as well. So it's kind of an interesting thing to see how I love the blend of the ancient wisdom for the, for today of having the you know, the Egyptian, a lot of the Egyptian things that are like mystical and, you know, a lot of things that where we look at those things is not necessarily as valid because we're so modern. And, you know, for me, I'm always being about the light because that's really, really important to be always on the side of the light because people can kind of stray over to the other side and not really necessarily know it. But it's still, that's such a beautiful opportunity. And when you are co-creating in that sense and co-elevating, it's like, life is great. And th those are those beautiful moments. Yeah. I would say in general, we, we still deal with our fair share of challenges, but how we handle it is just much lighter because it's the vibration yeah. that we're holding. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So to wrap it up, I would love for you to share what are your three keys, what comes to you for quantum leaping? So the three keys are, you need to know what the hell you want. That's the first thing. So just putting it out there, you know, I want, and I don't do it all of the secret. I don't think, I think in a lot of ways, that's kind of spiritual pornography where it's like, no, I want a Ferrari, I want a Ferrari. It's like, if you're li living in your mom's basement, you know, probably not going to happen, but it's the kind of thing of where it's putting that energy out there of what you're wanting to resonate with. So for example, I had an opportunity to upgrade my hybrid car, which I loved, 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 loved. I did not need to get it. I wasn't trying to flex on anybody or have any clout or whatever, but they came out with the new Mustang electric car and basically it was a $500 deposit and it was supposed to come in a couple of months. And so I was like, Oh, if it's meant for me, it'll come for me. And if it's not meant for me, it's not going to come for me. So put it on my work computer, saw it every day. It finally arrived. And I was like, 
I don't need this car. If I meant to have this car, I have everything just kind of line up for it to be able to happen. Post the next thing you know, I was able to get top dollar for my old car because used cars were really in demand at the time. And it got delivered to me on August 18th last year. So I'm just looking at that where I'm sitting. I was sitting in my manifestation, like actually sitting in it. And because I have a relative that works for Ford, I got a, a huge discount. I got a wonderful tax refund. It's like, it was all this, like, this where the universe just kind of like sets all this beautiful, like little curly cues out. But getting clear as to what you want and then starting small with incremental things. Like with when you're, you know, when I was talking about extending my, my, you know, going into debt for different things too, you're not ever giving that way the mortgage money or the electric bill or the groceries or the things like that. You need to have it where it only can be working from your extra and your surplus. And if you can stretch, you know, where you get credit or you get, you know, credit cards or you get a loan or whatever it is too, that's fine. But provided that you can take care of your basic needs, that's the most important thing too, because otherwise there's too much of a, I feel like the conscious ego will not allow you to go there because that becomes very dangerous. Cause then all of a sudden it's like, it's kind of a whiplash back of like, Oh, what are you doing? This isn't going to work. And then you're not in the flow of that. So staying in the flow of like looking at things from a small thing. I mean, it, I remember that when I started being in that manifestation stage, it was like, Oh, look, a Jamba juice card. It's just on the, on the sidewalk, pick it up. A lot of people wouldn't pick it up. They think it's maybe it's expired. I go check it out. It's 20 bucks. Hey, how cool. I just got a $20 Jamba juice card randomly on, on the, on the floor that I decided to pick up things like, you know, pennies or nickels, or if you see things that are on the ground, you know, those are to me, those are angels talking to you. Just pick them up and say, thanks for the penny. You know, even though it might be something small and then looking for the signs and synchronicities. Like I literally have a course called the science of science.com, which is all about the GPS that the universe puts out for you. And it's totally individual for each person. So like for you, since I know you, there's a certain name that you and I have been saying for four years, we've been saying this name over and over and over and over again. And every time we see this name, it's a Bethany sign. I know it's a Bethany sign because it doesn't belong to anybody else. It has your energetic frequency on it. So when you start to track those angel numbers, like the 1111, the 222, any of those different kinds of things there, when you step into that energy of allowing the universe to put on a show, and it will start doing that. I mean, literally when I started tracking that, mm -hmm. I got a download in 2012 and I would like, I would track them and I would have sometimes 15 to 20, 30 signs a day that I call signs. And I would voice oh note God. them or I'd write them down. And when I was driving to work, I would see a billboard, a sticker, a t-shirt, a bumper sticker. I would see this, whatever, all these, and then different numbers. I would write them down. And then when I would dictate them at night, they would spell out entire sentences in English language, grammatically correct six different things that was literally just speaking to you. But if I'm not paying attention, the number one thing that I tell everybody in the first module of my course is you've got to pay attention. You've got your AirPods on, you've got your hoodie on, your sunglasses, you're hunkered down, et cetera. You're not going to talk to anybody. You're going to be contracted. And we know you do not manifest when you're contracted. And just like for you, when you go to the dog park, I mean, there's probably sometimes when you're not interested in talking to people and other times that you are, but it's that deciding that you, I'm going to engage. I'm committing to engaging with the world today. And that, that, that could even be at home. I mean, I've, yeah. I've been indoors a lot of this time and I've still managed to be able to create a global reputation. And I didn't have a website and I didn't have any social media. And when I had a famous person get on my LinkedIn, I think I had like 15 people and they're like, oh, I think you got hacked. And I'm like, no, I just joined like yesterday because I didn't care about all that kind of stuff. That wasn't my... You know, it wasn't my thing. Yeah, Still kind of yeah. isn't my thing. But it's getting getting clear as to what it is that you want, putting that out there, and then also agreeing to basically co-create whatever comes forward and not say no initially until you have the discernment to be able to feel like you can't. That That's a really, really important thing. Saying yes is a really, really big deal. Like I said, a lot of people are very accustomed to scam artists and, you know, fraud and all that other kind of stuff too. And I get it. And we there are a lot of ways out there that people are trying to trick people. But if you start to tune into your own, into in, in your own intuition, it doesn't have to be spiritual. You can be an atheist and still believe in energy. And the quantum is quantum physics that has nothing to do with religion at all. Yeah. Wow. So cool. So cool. I feel like we need to touch a little bit about this movie that's coming out so people can find you, watch you, hear even more. Thank you. So the movie's called beyondphysicalmatter.com. And it debuts on the 25th of January, which I'm really excited about. And Dr. Glenn Ryan is a world-renowned scientist. And he actually brought all of these very expensive lab, these very expensive lab equipment to the studio in, in Texas, where my friend um, Jason Estes has the quantum energy wellness bed too. And if you're interested in that, that's 
cutting edge as well. But Glenn Ryan was there to be able to pull out the cheek DNA, swab it beforehand and measure it before and after a bed session. So they wanted to find out how efficacious the quantum energy wellness bed was. And as a result, basically the bed itself was 90%. They had a female and a male that went on the bed and did a before and after. So they did the cheek swab before and after. So the results were 90%. I had a client that I brought in where he got his cheek swab DNA taken out. And then before the session and then after the session, my efficaciousness as a healer was that 93.9% of his DNA moved during that one hour. And it was verifiable that it was actually, you know, before and after on scientific equipment. So that to me is something that is, I just feel really honored to have had that opportunity. Cause when they first told me like, oh, we're going to scientifically verify you. I was like, how are you going to do that? I don't even know if I even, like, you know, and I didn't want to go into my mind and be like, oh, should I perform for this? It's like, nope, I'm just going to do what I normally do anyway. And so that was just really, really exciting. But obviously Amazing. having a bed that's 90%, you can have consistency on that. You can do a bed session every day, you know, all every day for the rest of your life and have 90%. Whereas I can't do a one-on-one -on -one with everybody and be able to do that because there's only one of me. But it was still really incredible to be scientifically verified. So I got invited to be in a, an amazing movie, Donna Melinda Boyer. This is, I think, their 23rd documentary. And almost, and the last one they had that was, that was like 9 million downloads was Beyond the Secret. And that's on Amazon Prime right now, if you're interested in looking at that. And so Marie, Marie Diamond, who's on... Marie Diamond, who is in The Secret, and then John Asaraf and Joe Vitale, Dr. Joe Vitale, all of them are in the movie with us. And then Jeremy Hoffman and Jason Estes, who's the, the CEO of Voice Based Technologies. We have Milton Howard and Dr. Stephen Schwartz, who's called, the, he has a whole bed system as well with about vibration. They call him Dr. Vibe. So there's a lot of really cool people that are in the movie talking about the fact that not everything is about uh, healing like traditionally. And we've also got John the Greek Sectorus. He's a billionaire from Dubai, amazingly kind, special person, and which I'm grateful to be friends with him. And he, right now, Hollywood is making a movie about his life because he went from zero to billionaire just with humble means. And it's really incredible to watch people kind of like who can literally go from zero to nothing. But yeah. when you step into that unlimited space and then you're on other people that you've seen these things happen... You know, my friend Jason, he had, he was in the Marines and his, both of his shoulder blades ripped out. And he told me he'd never have any ability to be able to use his hands ever again. And he did mental meditations of talking to his hands and he has perfectly hundred percent, all of the dexterity in his arms from, from that too. And he's doing amazing things and healing people and, and just bringing amazing things in the world. So it's, it's really exciting to be a part of that project. I know Amazon prime is considered to be one of the biggest platforms in the world. And I'm just excited for this to inspire people. And I'm really looking forward to you know, people that want to work with me in 2024, because I feel like there's just so much goodness. I know people have gotten really great results when they worked with you. I know people have gotten amazing results when they work with me. Everybody's different and everybody needs the person that's right for them. But it's super exciting when you can literally get, you know, into, into somebody's energetic field with their their business and what they're doing in, you know, three to six, nine or 12 months, just be like, okay. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's get into the space. And then I like, I also use a biofield imaging um, system where I actually have them take photographs and then I can actually look at it almost like an x-ray. And then there's different places where you can see that. And then after the client has a session with me, 30 minutes afterwards, I have them take the same photograph and the same lighting again. So they can see this before and after. And it's literally sometimes even after five minutes, it's, it's, it's beyond amazing because it's empirical data. I'm, I'm a data nerd and I really like that. And Sometimes, you know, in, in spiritual stuff or like intuitive sessions, people are like, oh, I feel all floaty or I feel happy or whatever. It's like, that's great. But ultimately, we want also to see results. We want to see results in the 3D reality that get pulled down yes. from the 5D. And that's the part about, you know, that's the most exciting part. All about the results. Amazing. Well, I think anyone that's listened all the way to the end has picked up so many good juicy nuggets to support yourself in quantum leaping from what bubbles to clarity to, oh my gosh, so many things. Blessing, absolutely everything. What did you call that? What do you mean? Extreme blessings. Is that what it was? Oh, extreme gratitude. Extreme gratitude. Yeah. And gratitude stacking. Gratitude stacking of where it's just like literally, I mean, because when you I think mean, about it, when you get into the shower, 
you have you have the water, you have the pipes, you have so um, the water company, but then it's like, you've got your face wash and then you've got the person who made the loofah for you. And then you've got the person that did the body wash and the scrub. And then the person that did the shampoo and they did the conditioner and then, you know, the, the razor and then the shaving cream. And, you know, it just goes on and on of all the different things that are in there that all these people imagined in their minds and they created those and they literally live with you because you bought them. So good. Well, I am extremely grateful. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for sharing your wisdom. Thank you, Bethany. I appreciate yes. you. Appreciate you. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you loved what you heard, be sure to subscribe and let me know by leaving a review on iTunes. It fuels me to keep bringing you more guests. And if you aren't already following me on social media, check out at Bethany London and visit BethanyLondon.com for online programs and free healing opportunities or our corporate healing platform, LondonHeights.co. Don't hesitate to tag me and our guests with your favorite quotes for a reshare. I can't wait to connect with you in the next episode. And in the meantime, wishing you that quantum leap.